Hello friends, let's design the layout for half adder using NAND gates and this layout will be designed with microwing software. So briefly we'll just go through the half adder. So half adder which will have the two in logic inputs A and B and outputs are sum and carry. So this is the truth table which is to be verified and normally in simple way we design the half adder with one XOR gate and NAND gate, sorry AND gate simply. But uh, here we'll prefer to design this half adder using the NAND gates. So logic socket how it is made. So both the inputs A and B are given as input to this NAND gates. Output will be AB bar. If same input is given twice to the two input NAND gate, then NAND gate we know that it behaves like a NOT gate inverter. So AB bar here output becomes AB which is the equation for carry. For the sum equation, uh, if you just cross check with these Boolean expressions, then this output the same output is given as the input to this gates G2 and G3 and similarly same inputs A and B are provided to the respective gates and if output is given as a commonly to the G4 then the equation becomes equivalent to the equation for sum. Make a note of this diagram because uh, we will be mapping this layout with this logic diagram only. That is half adder using the NAND gates. So this is a screen of uh, microwind. So this is the two input NAND gate which is already designed. I have shared the video how to design this two input NAND gate in earlier video. So now already we have seen we need the five NAND gates to design the half adder. So I will make the copy of this. So this allows us a shortcut to create the copies. So this is a copy element. So I will make the copies of these five copies. So keep it with sufficient spacing. Two copies then I will keep the copy of these two and the copy will be made here. I will go to the right side. I require one more layer. So I will make the copy of this. Fine. So these are the five NAND gates ready with us. I will just zoom in it so that it becomes easy for doing the connections. Okay, so actually uh, these inputs are again copied. So I can delete some part. It separately all the inputs are indicated. So I will delete these inputs because there is only one input. Uh, means uh, input given to the only one NAND gate. Okay, fine. What else we have to do is I will delete these layouts that for n well and I will make it a single layer let us choose a single n well layout for all the gates PMOS gates ok this is ok so now this all PMOS transistors are to be designed with n well so I have taken this common n well for uh, all the PMOS bits of 5 NAND gates so initially we'll do with the connections of VDD and VSS. So VDD connections are to be done with NVEL. So VDD supply I'm connecting here to the NVEL. Now next is metal one layer. I will, I need to do the connections of all these This has to be connected here. So I will stretch it from these points connected here. Similarly, okay, and these points also. So all these uh, sources of all the five NAND gates are connected to VDD supply. So I will do the connection of this VDD now. So this will be VDD connection and similarly we will go for the connecting the ground connections. So for the ground connection see 
द सोर्स ऑफ ऑल दीज एनमोस ट्रांजिस्टर्स सो सोर्स वन सोर्स टू सोर्स थ्री सोर्स फोर एंड सोर्स फाइव सोर्सेस ऑफ ऑल द फाइव गेट्स आर टू बी कनेक्टेड टू द ग्राउंड कनेक्शन सो इनिशियली आई विल जॉइन ऑल दिस विद द मेटेलिक लेयर्स we we'll take it down because other connections I should keep the space so we'll stretch it here till this point okay fine and now do the connections of these ground connections ground connection because already so this is a drain gate drain gate source and again this is a drain gate and source for the transistor so we need to do the source of all this to be grounded so this should be connected to the ground connection so i will connect it to the ground connection so this vc vss and vdd connections are done now what next is so according to the diagram what we have seen the output of this output of this nand gate is to be given as a input to these two gates output is given as a input to this g3 and g2 so let us do that and similarly this one of the inputs so this input is given as a input to the another gate so we'll use the polysilicon layer to do the connections so we'll stretch it to the upside we'll do the connection this first okay and this layer is to be connected here and we'll join this layer okay so now this b input is given as a again input to the second gate similarly this a is to be given to this another gate we will connect this a input we will take it ahead again it's a sufficient width should be there now i will join this two okay and this is where we get the output yes this a has been given as a input to this third gate and b is given as a input to the second gate now what else is this outputs now second next inputs are left blank so what the next inputs are so according to our design this next input so next input what are the next input next input are nothing but outputs of the g1 gates so let us do that so this output has to be connected as a input to next gates so how this can be done so i will just stretch this polysilicon layers oh sorry so this to be stretched out okay i will take it from this side okay and this is to be given as a input to this inputs so i will join this Fine, and this is the next input. We'll join this. So these outputs are given. But what about these connections? So this connection shows that we should make here the some contact because otherwise it it is like a overlapping. It is just going above that. There is no connectivity between the two layers. So we need to have the metallic contact. So contact metal to poly silicon contact layers are there. So we can use this. But before that, I will stretch this metal layer so that proper overlapping has to be there with metallic layers. then only connection will be held yes this is okay now now if i use this metallic contact metal to polysilicon contact actually then only this output will be given as a input to this two gates now what next is so this is what outputs are there for so the designing of these gates is over now what else is left same output of the nand gate is to be given as a input to these two gates also input to these gates so i will just again stretch this ahead polysilicon layer and do the connections of this input so that will be ready with the carry output of carry okay fine so this is the what where we can have the carry output so this is the complete now what else is left we need to complete this part which part is left now so this particular part so this output of this to be given as a input to this g4 gate so that we will have the result of sum 
So output of this second gate, output of third gate has to be given as the input to this fourth gate. So this connection we can make it here easily here. So from the polysilicon layer, if I extend this layer, so we, yes, I can take the, I can just reach out here to take the outputs. Yes, and now we can have these connections. So we need to make here the again contact that is a polysilicon. So just I will stretch this metal layer so that proper overlapping should be there. And polysilicon layer also I will for this particular part I will increase it so that proper contact has to be held. So again metal. So why we are doing this contact? Because these two are to be connected. Otherwise there will be no connection held. So to have the connection we are doing the metal to polysilicon contact here. So now what next is left? So we have to do the metallic. So the here it is a challenging now. How it is? See output of this is to be given as the input to this gate. Now if I stretch this metallic layer and come to this, then there can be the connection between. Not unnecessary wrong connection that will be. This output will be shorted with the source terminal. This should not happen. Now if I continue with the polysilicon layer, if I stretch this polysilicon layer till this point, what will happen? This is the in between polysilicon layer. So there may be again unnecessary connection will be held and our logic will be wrong. So for that what can be done? We can use the one more metallic layer connection. So what we will do? We will take the help of the metal 2 layer. So I will join this with metal 2. some sufficient space should be there so i will take this up to this by point metal 2 layer and then connection has to be done with metal 1 with metal 2 and then again back because see when actually connection is to be done with input and output it is to be done between polysilicon and the actual metal bit layer only so let us come to this point and then again this is to be joined with metallic layer only so I will stretch this metal layer to do the connection. Yes, and metal two is here. Yes, now I will do this. I will use this contact metal one to metal two. Similarly, it will be required here. So I will join these two with metallic layer only. So if I stretch this polysilicon layer here. Okay, and then I require the metal one to join these both. It should be properly overlapped. So I am taking maximum part to, to do the connections. We will do this. This one more from this point. Okay, and metal two. Is there any connection? Okay, now I will join these two with metal two. So this is the overlap. Okay, fine. Okay, so this design is complete now. We have connected all the inputs and outputs. Now we need to check the sum from the fourth gate. So I will label this as a sum. So I will call this as a sum output and here I will check the carry output. Oh sorry, visible node. We should make this as a visible node and call this as a carry. We will just enter it. Sum and carry. So we can check here the sum and carry. So we should go for the design rule error checker. So design rule checker. So it indicates congratulations 1.9% memory is used and there is no error. Now we will simulate this circuit. So simulation says shows the perfect output so these are the inputs so for 1 1 we are getting the carry as a 1 this as a 0 for 0 0 both are 0 so for all all the conditions are verified here now this is without connecting capacitor now if we connect here one virtual capacitor there will be slight variations uh, in the waveforms that will increase the i will say okay and one more capacitor if we connect here increase in the values of rise and fall time so if we run the circuit so compared to earlier waveform rise time and fall time is getting the sufficient it has been increased and some time is required to get the output so this is what the 